morning, everyone. I am from Adventist Smart Science class. My name is, as you may remember, with the Weird Faker app. And in today's video, we will be talking about the second lesson in our grade 6 English Medium Science book. Things Around Us. Now, what are the things around us? Well, for example, this pen, this whiteboard eraser. Well, those are the things around us. In the first lesson, we talked about the, the environment. But this lesson, we talk about the things which are around us. Well, the first thing is a table. So, but before we fill the table in, we have a bit more to learn. So, after the table, we have a couple of, a couple of experiments to do. Mm, uh, well, as, the, as I said earlier in the first video, that those experiments will be done on other videos. So, without further ado, let's get on to the thing, the, the, the other topics after those couple of, of experiments. The first subtopic after that is matter and energy. energy. Now what is matter? Matter is a thing with a mass and occupying space is known as matter. Such as, well, this pen, uh, an animal, a vehicle, a vehicle, uh, well, some water is, well, you get it. Now what is energy? Things without Things without a mass and do not occupy space are known, are known as energy. For instance, light, fire, sunlight, etc. Well, now we can, as we move on, our next subtopic is math. Now, what is mass? The mass is the amount, the amount of matter in an object is referred as the mass of the object. The international measuring, uh, the international unit of measuring mass is known as kilogram. Or known as in well the, this way kg. There are some. This is the international. So, but there are there are some there are some other units in measuring mass, such as right here. Grams, which is G, and uh, milligrams. Are there uh, some other units? In measuring that. Now, there are three states of matter. They are solids, 
liquids and gases. First, we are going to talk about solid. What? Well, now you may be wondering, what is solid? Solid, solids are the things with a mass and occupy space, are known as solids. For examples, we can take Well, this brick. this stone. As we move on to our second one, which is liquid. Now, what is liquid? Liquid has a definite volume, but no definite shape. Such a, well, examples, you can take milk um water and Coconut oil. This, well, this is the This is the last one on the three states of matter, which is gas. Now, gas has no definite shape or no definite volume. So, when that is the, that, so, from that conclude from that it concludes we have con from that we have concluded cat state of matter now as for the table we can do it now now when we talk about things around us we can take this pin now does this pin have a mass Yes, it does. Does it occupy space? Yes, it does. That is the whole... Now, that is how that table works. There are three columns. The first is things around us, then having a mass. And the third one, well, it is occupying space. Now, we have concluded...
good as a pen. So, when you take water, does water have a mass? Well, yes. Does it occupy space? Yes. When you take sunlight, does sunlight have a mass? No. Does it occupy space? No. See, now, there's no different one for a gas. Sunlight is like a gas. Well, more like it. Well, sunlight is not a gas, but it's energy. Energy does not have a mass, or nor does it occupy space. Not air. But when you talk about air, air has a mass. Air can fill a bottle, and it can occupy space. There is an experiment for that in this lesson. But we will be talking about that in another video. So, what about fire? Well, it's basically no. It doesn't have a mass, nor space. No, it doesn't occupy space. So, what about current? I'm not saying, I'm not talking here, I'm not talking about the current in the sea, but the electric current. Does it have a mass? No. Occupy space? No. It's simple as that, my friends. Now, what about heat? Exactly the same. No mass, no occupying space. Sound, same. What about book? It has a mass and occupies a space. Animals, well, you definitely know it has a mass and it has, it does occupy space. So, moving on. We have another experiment, as I told you, that will be discussed in a, another video. Now, our next one is how to measure liquid using the measuring cylinder. Now, what is a measuring cylinder? The measuring cylinder is used to measure liquids in the laboratory. Well, here I, I'll draw the measuring draw the measuring cylinder over here. Now, how do you measure a liquid using this measuring cylinder? Well, the correct method of measuring a liquid from the measure, measuring cylinder is when you put the liquid into the measuring cylinder, you can see a curved surface of water. Now, if you put it here, we can see a curved surface of water. And this, and when you get the curved surface, you have to get the readings of the lowest point. Well, not wait just a second. One moment. One moment, please. Mm -hmm. And where is now? Where is the lowest point here? It is right here. And 
and this is known as the eye. Oh wait, the eye is well. You 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 have to take what you can, and well. That is it for the measuring sled part. We have yet again another experiment for the next one. So, and another experiment of that. And then we have the subtopic of comparing gas, comparing solids, liquids, and gases. Now you can take the this is table, okay? Now what is the form of matter? Form of matter is well solid, liquid or gas. Now what is the shape? Now you may be wondering what shape is this? Well, it's asking does it have a definite shape? And volume. You may be wondering what this volume is too. Well, it's asking, does it have a definite volume? Well, from the form of matter, we can write the first one, solid. Now, does it have a shape? It has a definite shape. Does it have volume? Yes, and the definite volume. And moving on to the second one, you can take liquid. Now, does liquid have a shape? Well, it depends. You may know that liquid takes the shape of the container. As you can see here, this bottle, the liquid has taken the shape of this bottle. So, it depends. Takes the shape of the container. And does it have a definite volume? Has a definite volume. Yes, it does. Now, we move on to the last one of this table which is gas. Now, does gas have a definite shape? Well, no. So, we can write no definite And as for volume, what can you say? Well, 
No, no different volume. And that is the end of the table. And we are coming to the end of this lesson, my friends. The last topic of this lesson is specific properties of solid matter. Now, what are these specific specific now what are these specific specific properties of matter well they are hardness malleability ductility uh, elastic nature brittleness and texture well our first one is hardness. Now, what is hardness? Hardness is, well, it is the property of resistance to scratch and abrasion and cutting is known as hardness. Now what is abrasion? Well it is the urge to itch. Well more like it's not that well scratch is that abrasion is well when you try to break it it is very hard to break and cutting you know Scratch is, well, I think you know that too. So, examples we can take, how about diamond. And And iron sheets, iron, iron, and that is it for hardness. And moving on to the second one, malleability or malleability. Now, what is malleability, you ask? Well, malleability is the ability to be drawn into thin sheets without breaking by hammering or rolling is known as malleability. Now, what is hammering? Like, well, not hammering at the door with your fist. Hammering is when you hit the object very hard and well you know what rolling is not rolling on the ground is known as malleability well examples are well once again metals so simple and the metals can be copper well you get the idea Third one is ductility. Now, what is ductility, you ask? The ability ductility is 
the ability of a metal to be drawn into thin wires is known as malleability. I mean, ductility. Ductility? Well, it is a thin mm, metal. Well, like this. It's metal. Metal is mm, like this. This is thin wires. Like, you know, thin pipes. Again, copper, like those. Now, number four, elastic nature. Now, what is elastic nature? The property of a the, the property of increasing the size of an object with the force of stretch, like a, a rubber band, but when you pull it with your hand, it increases its length like this. And this is your other hand. It increases length like that. That is known as elastic nature. Well, examples we can take rubber and well, elastics. Like that. Oh. On to number five, brittleness. Now, what is brittleness? Tendency, brittleness is the tendency of a material to be broken with a small force is known as is known as brittleness. Now examples we can take uh well glass not the glass you wear or it's the glass you drink from. Oh well I'll show you. This is a glass bottle, right? No, I can't. I can't really break it with my bare foot, but if this were a drinking glass, I could easily break it. And what about coal? Now, what is coal? Well, here is a fire. The substance, the hard, a hard. When the fire is over, there are there is ash and small rock like things. They are coal. Now the last one. The last one of this lesson, the last thing, the, well, this, my friends, is the last subtopic we will be discussing in, in this lesson. lesson. And the last one of, well, the six things we have to talk about. And the last one is... Well, you might have guessed, textures. Now, what is texture? Texture. Mm -hmm. Well, the feel of a surface, rough or smooth, is known as texture. We can take 
examples such as baby talk, baby talk. Well, baby talk is like the fit, the fit of an infant, like this, like a saliva, and cotton, the one that is used in filling up pillows, cotton. And these two are examples for smooth. And for rough, we can take So simple. Now, that is it for the second lesson, everybody. And as we move on to the third lesson in another video, it's goodbye from here. And, and make sure to watch my experiment videos too. Until then, it's goodbye.